Hey everyone, it's thrifting time again. I haven't been going out to thrift shops as much anymore, so it's taken me several months to get a video like this together, but let's take a look and see what I found over the last couple of months. This first location was filmed, I think, at the end of September or beginning of October, so they have all their Halloween stuff out. Look at all of this plastic crap. It's such a waste. It all just ends up here at Goodwill. Now over in the DVD section, I found um, some copies of the Pee Wee's Playhouse uh, DVD box set. I used to love this show when I was a kid, but as you can see here, they've got them all priced individually, even though they're all part of the same box set. I really don't like when Goodwill does that. Now over here, looking at the video games, we have a lot of your just standard PlayStation 2 stuff that nobody wants. But then uh, there was this handsome fellow over here giving us the eye. <laughs> Such a silly picture of John Travolta. Looks like we've got some more uh, PC games down here. Nothing too interesting though. And Taking a look at the cassette tapes, didn't really see anything either, but I found this copy of uh, Throwing Copper by Live. This was the very first CD that I ever bought. Now over in the electronics section, I saw this Sony DVD player, and I have to say, this is the ugliest DVD player I've ever seen. I've, I've never seen one that looks like this before. And I was kind of surprised that it was Sony, because usually Sony stuff is pretty cool looking. The design of this kind of reminds me of the Sony Sports line of portable electronics, but this thing's blue instead of yellow. Now it's got S-Video though, that's kind of cool. It's just ugly though. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and leave this here. Now here's something from Sony with a much nicer design. This is the kind of thing I expect to see from Sony. This is a pretty little neat AM FM clock radio. I like the mirror finish on the screen there. It looks like it's not working properly, but it is. It's just the refresh rate on my camera and the LED refresh rate. Now these are interesting. These are Jim Beam decanters. People used to collect these. I believe this one's from 1969. And uh, they did have a little bit of liquid still left in them, so that's kind of gross. But I've never really seen these at the thrift store before. I was aware of them. Um, they're not quite worth $20, though. Um, at least most of them are. I took a look on eBay to see what they were going for, and they go for about $10 to $15. This is a Bing Crosby commemorative uh, decanter from 1970. Such a weird thing to collect. It's always interesting when you find people's weird collections dropped off at Goodwill. I think out of all of them, this is my favorite decanter because it's from the Fiesta Bowl, so it has an Arizona connection. I always find a lot of Fiesta Bowl stuff at Goodwill. Now here is an old Sears Kenmore sewing machine. This is from the 1970s, I believe, based on the logo. I couldn't find an exact model number on it, but this was just kind of interesting because it's topless. <laughs> so you can see the inside mechanisms and everything and kind of see how it works. This also caught my eye too because I could picture this hanging either above a billiards table or in a pizza joint. Now while we look at this old chair on the way out of this store, I want to tell you about a visit that I had to this same Goodwill not too long ago in the evening. I came here to pick up some RCA cables because they're always cheap at Goodwill and I found something that's like one of the rarest things for the Nintendo NES. This is just really cool. What I found was the interface module for the RacerMate bike system for the Nintendo NES. Now, like I mentioned, I just ran out the door real quick, so I didn't bring my camera, and I actually forgot my phone, but as soon as I got home, I took pictures of it. You can see here I started the process of removing the price tag, and I actually found this kind of hanging out underneath some shelves just peeking out, and if you look at the date on that price tag, it looks like it's been in the store for a while. I looked around for the whole RacerMate setup, but this is all I could find was the interface module. Here's some pictures of what the whole setup looks like. You put your bike in that frame thing, and then everything hooks up to the NES through a cartridge in that interface module. This is one of the rarest accessories for the Nintendo NES, so it's really cool that I found the at least the interface module at Goodwill. Now here's a look at it all cleaned up. I got the price tag off of it, and really, I have no idea what to do with this thing. I'm probably just going to keep it on my shelf as like a piece of shelf candy, but I'm sure a collector somewhere out there maybe needs this interface module to complete the RacerMate set that they have. So I may end up selling it later on down the road. Alright, let's move on to our second Goodwill location. 
And this is one of my favorites too, because I usually find lots of weird stuff here. And this is something that I always think is weird at Goodwill when I see picture frames and things donated and they have people's photographs still in them. Like, I wonder what the story was behind this picture, like where they were getting ready to go. Let's take a look over at the video games and there's a lot of Wii and Xbox stuff. Pretty used to seeing that at Goodwill now. Looks like we've got some PC games over here. Nothing that I need. I'm always wary of buying modern PC games too, because um, like these ones, for example, in these bigger boxes, they usually have activation codes and they've usually been claimed. And I got a good laugh at this because I didn't know they bothered to make a step up too. And also because this is an old blockbuster movie. This is uh, one of their rentals that they sold later on down the road. And I just kind of get a little warm and fuzzy looking at that blockbuster logo. Now, over in the VHS tapes, we've got uh, Monty Python's Flying Circus, and then just a lot of those Disney clamshell ones. And then there was this weird thing. I thought that said Booty Flex when I was walking by, but it says Body Flex. This is obviously from the early to mid-80s. Look at the fonts on that, and look at that lady's hair. Here's a look at the two VHS tapes that were in the box. More big hair, of course. And this thing was complete. It looks like there's some paperwork in here and some charts to track your progress. I just, I love that Body Flex logo though in that font. Such a silly thing to find. Taking a look at the uh, cassette tapes, there's not a lot interesting here as well. It seems like cassette tapes and VHS tapes are kind of starting to dry up at the local Goodwills by me. They did have this Richard Pryor's Greatest Hits tape, but I have this on vinyl already. 1999 was a weird year for music. Ugh. Now this was interesting. I've never seen this before. This is Rubik's Race, and it's a Rubik's Cube based game. It actually says down in the lower right hand corner from the people that brought you the Rubik's Cube. This looks like it's from 1982. I don't think this is something that's uh, manufactured anymore. I've never seen this game before. I always find old 70s and 80s board games interesting though. Here's Uno Deluxe from the late 70s, and I've never seen Uno in such a big box before. Let's take a look at what's inside. Let me tell you, this box smelt like the 1970s when we opened it up. But this is kind of cool to see. There's some old paper score seats here, and I actually really like the late 70s style of those Uno cards. Here's something I find at Goodwill a lot. New old stock of discontinued toy lines. This is the Rocks line from Imperial Toy, and these came out in August of 2012, and from what I can tell, they weren't very popular and were discontinued maybe a year or two after that. You can see the manager's special sticker still on there from when it went on clearance. Here's something every Goodwill seems to have, the digital point-and-shoot camera graveyard. I wonder how well these actually sell. Here's an original Xbox console for 25 bucks, which isn't a bad price if it works, and it would be nice if it had the cables and stuff too, but i found a lot of times these Xboxes are now dead when I find them at Goodwill. I also noticed the uh, Wii Fit board pile is a lot smaller. I wonder if they've actually been selling them. I love seeing old lab tech speakers, and they had two pairs of these here. I almost considered picking these up, but I'd rather have them in beige than in that black. Here's a Toastmaster toaster, and I think this is the same model that they used in the Ghostbusters 2 movie that they made dance around with the ooze. It's a nice mirror finish there. Here's an old Cornwell grandfather clock. The model number on this is CCM9090, and this was actually sold through Montgomery Ward. I tried to open this up to take a look at the paperwork, but it was kind of stuck and I didn't want to break anything. But yeah, if you look at the back here, it says Montgomery Ward on there. I believe they sold this sometime in the late 60s or early 70s. I could be wrong on that though, it's kind of hard to find a lot of info. Now here's something Mark found, he's always looking at cookbooks, and this Top Secret Recipes book may be something that you see used in some future retail archaeology videos. Moving on to our next Goodwill, this one's located at Pima Pavilions, and I don't think I've featured this one on the channel before, but I really like this location because there's a lot of old money that lives around here, so a lot of interesting stuff gets dropped off. I don't know if this is an example of that, but here's some more PC speakers from Quickshot this time. I'm used to seeing Quickshot joysticks and stuff. I didn't know they made speakers, and I probably would have bought those if they weren't yellowed, just to kind of play around with and see how good they were. And here's some uh, Sony PC speakers. These are pretty nice too, but 
they're black and all of my old PCs are beige and I'd like the color to match and also looks like the batteries leaked in here unfortunately. This was kind of interesting. I don't think I've seen this many flat screen TVs at Goodwill before. A lot of people must have got new TVs. The Sweet Machine. This is something I remember seeing in the stores a few years ago and I was kind of interested in, but now that I'm seeing it in person and out of the box, it looks like it's a little cheaper than I thought it was. Still kind of interesting though, that'd be neat to have your own little personal skill crane. Let's take a look at the video games. And what's this? Look, there's an Xbox game that's not a sports title. It's a Medal of Honor Frontline. I already have that though, so I don't need it. I wanted to see what this was, but it's just Driver 2 for the PC, not something I need. This, however, caught my eye, this Pinball Mania collection from Softkey. I love these old, cheap PC game collections, so I'm going to grab that. This was kind of interesting to see, too. Here's uh, the Classical Mood, a classical music collection. And they're all in these little, like, book-type things. I bet this was super expensive when it was new, and now they're all here for $1.29 a piece. Looks like Mark found something he's interested in over in the DVDs. This is The Man with Two Brains, and if you collect DVDs, Goodwill's a great place to look now because they used to be 2 and $3, but they're all the way down to $1.29 for a DVD. I found something over in the DVDs I wanted too. I found Halo 2, which should have been over with the video games. This is the limited collector's edition. I have Halo 2, but this is a much better condition copy, and it's complete. It's also only $2.99, which is cheap for this. I'm getting it. Now here's a gingerbread house bake set that I found, but out of the corner of my eye, I thought it was just like a gingerbread house kit, and I was like, oh my god, are there still gingerbread pieces in there to make it? But no, it's just the set to bake the gingerbread. The box still caught my eye, though, just because it's so old school looking. It's probably from the early to mid 80s. I don't think anybody actually bakes their own gingerbread now, though. They just buy those kits with all the pieces pre-made. Let's move on to our last store, and this is a Salvation Army family store. This place just opened. Mark and I happened to drive by it while we were out filming something in Peoria. And this is the first thing I saw that gave me a good chuckle. This is a rhinestone stud setter from Ronco. So you can bedazzle all your crap, all your jeans and your denim jacket. There it is, as seen on TV by Ronco. <laughs> This stuff is just the worst. I wonder how many of these they actually sold. I, I, they probably sold tons knowing Ronco. This also gave me a good laugh, this old touchtone telephone. It's from the Shrek movie, uh, Shrek the Third. I almost bought this just for stupidity's sake, but I don't even have a landline anymore. It's just funny to see that. I, I can't believe that's something they made and that somebody bought. There wasn't a whole lot over in the electronics section. There was this nice set of Logitech PC speakers, but again, I need the old 80s PC beige color to match the computer that I'm working on. Here's an old Orion CRT television, and I actually just got rid of one that was the same model recently. It finally crapped out after a lot of years of service. And here's a neat Sony boombox. I'm actually on the lookout for one of these, but not one so modern looking. And also the tape player on this one ended up not working. Still would be pretty neat though for a little boombox for your kitchen or something though. It sounds pretty good. Just not quite what I'm looking for. Let's see what they've got going on in the old furniture area. Oh look, it's your grandma's couch. Or uh, maybe this was your grandma's couch. Or that one there. It's all grandma couches here at the Salvation Army thrift store. This store really wasn't very big though. It's probably half the size of a lot of the Goodwills I go to. And then they had stuff kind of far, you know, spaced out. So it didn't take us very long to go through the store with how small it was. Now here's the media section, and this is something I like to see when they just have like a flat price for CDs and DVDs and things, because oftentimes you can find some really great, you know, computer games and video games much cheaper than they should be because they've just flat priced them just like it's a DVD. Unfortunately, the only video game that I found here was this copy of Tiger Woods 
PGA Tour 2001 for the PlayStation 2. Definitely don't need that. Well, I think this was the most underwhelming of the four thrift stores we looked at in this video. Let's go ahead and head on out now and take a look at what Mark and I picked up. So here's Mark's pickups. He got that Top Secret Recipes book and then that The Man With Two Brains DVD. And also, like I mentioned, you'll probably see that Best of Top Secret Recipes book appear in some future episodes of Retail Archaeology. Now here's what I picked up. I picked up Halo 2, the limited collector's edition, and then that Pinball Mania compilation. This Halo 2 is in really great shape. The only thing it's missing is the slip cover that goes over the steel book, but there's not really any dents in it, and it is complete. It has the game as well as the extra bonus DVD that came with it. And then it even has the Xbox Live advertisement. It has the manual, and then it has a little extra booklet that came with the collector's edition as well. So I'm really happy to have this, especially for $3. It usually goes for about $20 on eBay. And then the other thing that I grabbed is this uh, Pinball Mania collection. I love these cheap little soft key releases, so I'm pretty happy to add this to my collection as well. But that's going to wrap up this episode of Thrifting Time. As always, everyone, thanks for watching. Want to see your name here? Head on over to patreon.com slash retail archaeology to find out how you can help support the channel. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out this episode of Thrifting Time. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons, and also please make sure to follow at the social media links down there because that's the best way to keep up with what's going on with the channel.